I am I audible? Oh, okay. Am I audible and visible? You are both. Okay. Wait a second. Okay, for POI, please just unmute yourself. All right, starting my speech in three, two, one. In opening opposition, we prefer the portrayal of Jesus in medieval age. That's That means we have three traits to show. First, it's about sacrifices. That's why Jesus is bearing his cross and it's about him uh, saving the sinners, about his suffering. Um, yeah, basically about his story of being cornered and marginalized by the Roman Empire and also people in Pharisee, for example, or the Jews who used to hate his teachings. But third of all, it's also about salvation in afterlife. So this is what comes after the sacrifices. This is what comes after the suffering. It's basically about Jesus suffering, uh, sacrificing himself to salvage literally the whole humankind. That's why he sacrificed his life. This portrayal is what uh, what is being consistent with... Uh, with what being maintained by the Christians and also the Catholics until right now, right? So two things in my speech. First, why there should be a consistency of message about Jesus' life story with uh, about Jesus' life story with the Bible. Second of all, uh, why then cheerful and childlike depiction is not really important and will not get to um, the most important demography of Christians and also Catholics. All rebuttals will be integrated. So first of all, why there should be a consistency between the the message delivered in the art for, and also the life story of Jesus in the Bible. So how does Jesus' journey look like in the Bible? Three things. First, he is meant to die to salvage the humankind for their sins. This, uh, this was being repeatedly told in all like the like basically in Perjanjian Baru. Second of all, he's misunderstood and also punished by the Pharisians, by the Roman Empire, and lastly by Pontius Pilatus because he's deemed as someone who is different, who's uh, who spread false messages, who tried to admit himself as the king of the Jews. Uh, people think he is not, but he defends the marginalized, uh, marginalized community who people at the time deem as sinners like prostitute or people with leprosy, for example, that was being uh, outcasted by the society at the time. These are things that we Christians and Catholics celebrate to express to express our gratefulness to Jesus, but also to express our ability to, um, well, at least to put Jesus as a role model with that, without having too much difference with ourselves as a humans. So what do I mean by this? So this is why picturing Jesus with traits of suffering and cross-bearing is important as a reminder of his battle, his way of life, and also what he has done for the Christians and also the Catholics. So by principle, following medieval type of picturization is much more accurately uh, representing the values of Christianity uh, by representing the values of Christianity and also Catholicism. So that's why cheerfulness, uh, like very a plain person, gender fluidity is not what being emphasized in the Bible at all, right? So, but why then this is practically correct and why is practically important? So by principle, uh, so the main purpose or function of religion is to help us um, to cope with sufferings of life. That's why we have to have proximity and relatability to that particular religion so we can internalize the message that, oh, even gods and also like whoever comes before me, whoever teach these teachings also face Hi, suffering. Cody. It's not something that um uncommon, that we're not being punished, that even people as great as Jesus Christ also face that, right? This is what Christianity and capitalists want to strategically cater. This is proven by the depiction of as fellow who undergo mundane reality yeah even though he can magically turn like water into wine but that does not necessarily mean he's like a very super type of god that is like you know zeus and everything right and the only exclusive you way like play, um okay wait a second i'm going to receive that at five so this is the only exclusive way because uh this is the only way to show the suffering and sacrifices of jesus because through art or through paintings especially, it's much more visual. It gives you emotional context to the visual depiction, like the color of the skies, like the property that Jesus are holding, like the uh, the colors or the theme that this particular art chose 
to have or even the types of brushing techniques, for example, it enables you to grasp the value much more better. So that's why art is an exclusive tool to amplify this message. Thus, it's important to make it consistent because this is, on, this is the only way for people can to be able to is that suffering is part of um, uh, suffering is uh, you can cope with sufferings and capitalism and Christianity is there for you to help your sufferings because Jesus also encountered this and this is the reason why you are also uh, you're also going to be safe from your sins and whatnot um yeah your ICG um on a curiosity you you don't really get the image of Jesus anyway so you cannot necessarily say they're accurate but even if that's true why can't all those thoughts of defending the underprivileged can only be done if Jesus is a man with a long beard and a long hair this is borderline um generalization okay so basically the art is not about gender so I don't think the gender or like what um like what sex does Jesus have is what's most important here but second of all i'm going to rebut later on but how minority and gen z has been, or basically any progressive demographies are already detached by this particular religion uh so regardless of how you want to depict this art uh like it doesn't matter you will not get their attention anyway but okay let's re let's rebut to that uh, accuracy point that justin brought I think that in order for you to understand the accuracy, you need to read Bible, right? I read Bible, so I know. But never, uh, but nevertheless, I don't think this is like Jesus being like cheerful, playing gender fluidity and whatnot. Is what being constant, consistently picturized in like Catholic scriptures or in like Cotbas, for example. So I don't think even if there are some some priests or pastors that try to preach that. In the quantity base, there are like very small amount of people who do this, and they're like very minority in numbers. So I think that the accuracy of the accuracy of depiction that people perceive of Jesus is much more lenient to this wisdom, um, this wisdom type of person who is uh, like sacrificing a lot for us and whatnot. So that's on the idea of accuracy. Second, all second of all, why cheerfulness and childlike type of depiction is not important. I think that Gen Zs and basically younger generations who are progressive are already detached from religion due to external factors that are out of this art. Things like how they see religion as punishing, the abuse that is being priests and pastors. So not going to be fixed on either side of the house, it's not important. But check them out, all changes is not exclusive in art. There are Vatican Concili, there is Pope regenera uh, regeneration, that's how we can find Pope Francisca being much more uh, progressive compared to Benedictus XVI. But lastly, progress will happen in our side anyway, because when you preach Jesus as the most wise person with his best wisdom, Jesus is seen as the only person who can judge everyone. So there's no people that is more, sin uh, that is more sinful than the others. Very proud to oppose. Uh, yeah. Okay, thank you, leader of opposition. Uh... To continue the case of OG or that committee, if you want to continue, yeah, thank you. Okay, um, is it recording? If it's recording, I just want to say, um, none of what I'm saying is going to represent my values. I know this. I understand this is a very um, sensitive topic, so do not sue me. I do not have any money. So um, yeah, it's gonna be fun. All right. Um, POI through unmuting yourself. I will not. I will not be looking at um the. Uh, yeah, I will not be looking at the chat. Gonna start my speech. In three. Two. Uh, one. We are talking about the historical portrayal of Jesus. Which one is better to be portrayed for the long run when it's happening during the dark age or during the medieval? I think what's important to note and what was missing on OG is the picturization on what does the Dark Age represent. I think the Dark Age represents a gruesome time in which people are literally killed left and right, for example, and the imagery of Jesus being cheerful was used as an image of toxic positivity, an image of manipulation that represents millions of people that was killed in the name of religion, but also millions of people that was forced to be happy and accept the dominance of church that was corrupt at that time. That's why we oppose that picturization. Moving on, I'm gonna have two rebuttals to OG to directly tackle their clash and then case. And I'm gonna talk about why the depiction of dark age is harmful and how movement of uh, minority is going to necessarily be, uh, how um, check and balance and religion fulfilling its purpose can necessarily happen on opposition to, to get us that first place. 
So first things first, right? Let's talk about gender disputy, a point from OG that was deemed to be the most progressive point of all, right? Two responses. One, we question the importance of the picturization of gender disputy, right? Let's not lose focus. The grant comfort to individuals who believe Two, to give moral compass and ability to navigate the complexities of human experience in society. Generalistness may give people a small sense of comfort. This, that is to say, people who are necessarily feel relatable to that form of specific gender expression. But within the comparative and the sacrifice, will be many, many people feel comfort, for example, in the idea that someone has died for them in that cross, for example, to salvation. If we were to compare the degree of comfort that is given by the first argument regarding how salvation allows individuals to feel like they, they are worth something because someone died for them, and the comfort of gender expression that I think CG also wants to bring, I think it's clear that in terms of utility, people are able to relate to the idea of someone sacrificing them better because it means it allows it's something that is value based and not something that is very you know um individuals um expression based right even if they were to change um gender expression even if they were a genderless um person who has that gender expression they're still able to relate to our message in comparison to your end in which people who are not genderless for example are not able to relate to the idea of jesus that's why this point shouldn't even be important on OG. Second, we talk about people enter on the basis of joy and guilt tripping, etc. Two responses, right? One, I think it's it's not true that people are forced to join the uh, Christianity, especially in this age, right? Religion are already properly amplified. Other choices exist. You can just go atheist, for example, if you don't want it. So it's not that people don't. If people are forced, for example, to experience Jesus being uh, sacrificed, but people want to do it because people relate to it because people feel like they're worthy for example because people, because people feel like that jesus chose them for example to be worthy and that's good this is a form of good consent right but the question then it's not a form of guilt tripping and it's a joyful picturization because when people when, when jesus sacrifices himself for you you are able to experience a life that is joyful a new life born anew for example the picturization and the focus on sacrifices and cross depicts the opportunity of individuals to necessarily practice and achieve this new life that I think is uh, missing on our government and the cheerful depiction. So I'm going to extend, right, talking about why the depiction of dark age is harmful. I think there are two, two important uh, points that comes from government's um, depiction of uh, dark age. That is, that Jesus is cheerful and there is a lack of cross, for example, in the depiction of Jesus, right? Why then two of these points are harmful? Let's talk about cheerful, right? I think cheerful associates with the idea of innocence, for example, in the face of atrocities, you are still maintaining a happy face. You are young, for example, not tarnished by the life that necessarily happens. It engages on the idea of innocence. This is bad on several reasons, right? One, it takes away the sense of comfort. Most humans don't find the comfort in a little kid. They go to religion because they see guidance from a being that is more grand, more smarter, for example, more intellectual than them, able to necessarily is able to give them the wise solutions, for example, to the life's complex problems. Micro gestures and personas actually showcases whether people trust you or not in status quo. And that also is applicable to a grander being that you want to look for wisdom to. Look of wisdom and a person that uh, and a God that is able to depict that allows for individuals to feel a sense of comfort because they feel like, oh, I can trust this God, for example. The comparatives, the cheerfulness, the uh, neglects, for example, their particular importance because it asks you to necessarily say that in the face of atrocities and harms and problems, for example, you need to maintain a happy face, which I think is not relatable to lots of people because they feel like, oh, that's a naive way of seeing problem because I am actually in a gutter right now fighting for my life. The comparative is it's harder for individuals to actually emulate the face of God on your side in government because on your side, then the face of God is unrelatable, too godly and too powerful, too um, intellectual, for example, to necessarily be animated because they're able to smile when I'm crying currently. When Jesus is suffering and crying on our end, it necessarily showcases Jesus is also human, but also showcases that it's okay for us to let out our emotions first, to let the problems of life get us down, and we will actually put our faith in him because he went through it and he, uh, he lived after three days. And we can also, for example, able to emulate that and able to be saved by him because he has already sacrificed so much for us. That is the importance of not having cheerfulness on your end, right? Because the severity of Jesus' sacrifice needs to be highlighted, especially in medieval imageries. That's why it's good on our end. Second, the lack of cross, right, in government. Why is this bad? Three reasons. One, cheerfulness and general fluidity will not be able to achieve this because it celebrates life in a way that's inconsistent. But more importantly, cross represents minorities' struggle. 
Justin, take notes. The image of cross is important, right? Because back then, Jesus was a minority. Jesus came from a poor family who was under authoritative racist regime who was with a fucked up criminal justice system. The constant depiction of the cross symbolizes Christianity and Catholicism's um, idea of fighting against the huge power that exists in Pontius Pilatus. That is to say that the poor is able to cope with the suffering. The poor is able, for example, to necessarily allow these kinds of suffering to necessarily um, you know, come by. God, then, is the protector of those who are being treated unfairly by forces outside of the control, and that comfort can only come when Christianity embodies the symbolism of the cross at the end of the day. This is exclusive on government because on opposition, because government doesn't allow cross, for example, to take front and center, and the salvation point that Sakhar talked about is not being given a full uh, display on government, uh, it, it is on opposition. Lastly, movement will be better, right? Toxic positivity is harder to be internalized by people. Guess what happened in dark age? Poverty. People are given the false image of a cheerful, toxic positivity, God, in which they forget the corruption that is done by God's church. We are suffering to those in power because those in power are able to corrupt, and we need to rely on Jesus Christ, for example, as a way for us to fight, for example, these corrupt powers. Salvation comes when we highlight that salvation has come to Jesus Christ, and we need to remind those people that Jesus sacrificed himself for you, that you have to live your best life, live a life out of suffering, proud to vote folks. Okay, thank you, um, the beauty leader of opposition. Since all the other team consents, we can just keep the recording running from now on. I call upon the member of government to open the closing debate. Hi, can it be heard? It can be heard. Great. Uh, BOI through chat, I'm going to take one. Um, well, I, don't, I, I probably want to engage with closing, uh, give me something to work, or if no, nothing from closing, I'm going to take it. Oh, yeah, by the way, this is also being uh, recorded. So, um, like, I, I don't know, um, like, some of what I said will be, like, um, it, I'm not going to say offensive, it's, it might be a sensitive topic. Um, everything I say is purely for the purpose of this debate. Nothing reflects my personal opinion or any other stuff. Okay. Two so extensions from closing government. One, I'm going to talk about a couple of framing. And then second, I'm going to talk about why does the relatability of Jesus being a human is exactly going to be achieved on the R7 house, negating the entire case from opening opposition. First thing on framing. Um, there are four pieces of framing that you're going to get under closing government that are exclusive, not, not in this top half. First, I think the debate probably exists only within Christian community, and we're happy to admit this. But we also think OGS explanation on why religion would be much more benefited because of followers and stuff like that. It, we don't think that's important nor certain insofar as they probably are not the vulnerable actors. CG will focus on why the vulnerable people, which is the people who believe in Christianity, and why they probably get more fulfillment from their religion under closing government. So by weighing of vulnerability and quality of benefit, surely we win. Second, accuracy should not be part of a debate insofar as no teams have the epistemic access to know how Jesus looked like in the past, unless we are 2,000 years old, which I'm sure that none of us are. The primary source of images of Jesus did not come from an imageless Bible. The Bible literally doesn't provide any description of how Jesus looked like, unlike other figures like David in 2 Samuel or John the Baptist in the book of Matthew to John. If any, we think that the Dark Ages portrayal is more accurate insofar as they are closer to Jesus' birth and that a priori. So logically, they captured the moment better. We're talking about the first church. We're talking about the journeys of Jesus' disciple, talking about uh, Peter, talking about Paul, and stuff like that. This also negates opposition idea of consistency insofar as there's factually no certainty for that argument. It's unclear why they provide a better accurate representation of Jesus. So accuracy should not be part of the debate if it was a part of the debate closing of Jesus. Three, I want to point out that the miracles and the crucifixion of Jesus will still be known in both sides. So this is a very weird misconception from Paul Powell. 
because they sort of assume that it will be mutually exclusive, right? Because OG said, ah, you know, they're going to be so happy. Op said, ah, no, they're going to be so gloomy. Insofar as people still read the Bible as a car and they still attend church every Sunday, they will still know that Jesus did both miracle and Jesus did die at age 33 because the art of the portrayal of Jesus is not the primary source of information to Jesus' history to a lot of Christians. So this is not about history either, unlike what OG said. But this is about what will Christians think and what image will pop up in their head when they first hear the name Jesus. We think that in our side, we want Jesus to be portrayed as Apollo, which, by the way, is also the fun fact, historical reason why 25th December is celebrated as Jesus' birthday, even though it's not historically correct, is because they were celebrating Apollo's birthday during the era of Emperor Constantine. So, yeah, that's a fun fact. This is because Apollo in Greek mythology is told to have been cursed to be actual humans with flesh and blood two times for defying Jesus. So we claim the image of human under closing government insofar as the uh, you know, uh, the effort and the influence of Greek mythology during the Dark Ages are still extremely prominent. For example, they try to associate Jesus with a particular act, uh, with a particular figure that was probably uh, much well known in that era. This frames out OG idea of guilt trip because CEO was fair to point out that Jesus will still be crucified because the Bible exists. This also frames out OO because all of their benefits exist while the Bible exists. People know that Jesus was still crucified. Anyway, it's really unclear why talk health benefit is mutually exclusive. Lastly, I just I just want to break down this deadlock of like dark age and medieval. Um, during the dark age, Christianity was still going, and this is where the churches were the most free and the less restrictive because they're trying to affect a lot of people because they're trying to uh you know uh in their own words change the people from their pagan belief to believing in Christianity, right? And the absence of this, when the church was already quite large enough in the um medieval era, which like that's chronologically correct by the way. Catholic Church was historically more interventionist. Catholic Church was historically more suppressive of individual freedom. They, are, they was historically more corrupt because it was historically more powerful during those era. So no doubt by Elder's explanation of why in dark ages, Catholic Church were oppressive. If it was oppressive, it would be more oppressive under opposition side of the house. So that's all for the history lecture. I guess so all, what this training does is to prove that the benefit that Pop have argues is mutually inexclusive and also inconsistent as well. I'm going to take opening. Go understanding that on your end art also has impact then it means if we showcase that on our end church needs to show the cross then it means that the benefit of cross saving the minorities etc is better on our end and salvation is better communicated on our end as well. see that's that's the fun part because the um of jesus in a cross were never showed inside the bible uh like sakan would know because like sakan read this right but also when you come to um church every Sunday to hear a sermon, the priest or the pastor is not likely to show an image of Jesus. What they're likely to cite is some verses from the Bible and they try to explain how that translates into daily life. So that uh, that frames out of the opening opposition benefit of delivery of message better because it's very unclear why they would use this kind of picture in a sermon anyway. At least in our side of the house, what we prove was that the image is important, but for exclusive reason. I'm going to talk about this in right. Relatability is a prerequisite for people to get any benefit from Christianity. I think we frame out that other benefits in this bit are very uncertain. The relatability in closing government is the relatability of Jesus being human and, you know, more portrayed, associated by the God Apollo, for example, who was cursed to be human, associated with the fact that they, that he probably, you know, uh, have also a lot of freedom in ex uh, expressing what he thinks is uh, what he thinks was probably correct in that particular time. So this is extremely important considering three things as well. One, the most prominent problem for Christians is that they don't know what to do, and I mean that in the deepest possible sense. So God is perfect, and humans are imperfect, but the humans are told to be perfect as well. It was noted in Matthew chapter five, verse forty-eight. They know now, in our side of the house, when they hear the image Jesus, they understand that Jesus is probably 100% human. This is talking about he was tempted by the devil, for example. Yeah, So, you know, he can be cheerful. He can be every, uh, experiencing a lot of stuff that he did in the past. Jesus sometimes also went out of control, enraging in the holy temple. But that's fine, because now people know that Jesus was a human anyway. The relatability exists in our side of the house when he was portrayed using the figure of God of Paul rather than Zeus. Second, the problem with... um uh how. Okay, the problem with ritualistic the problem with ritualistic in religion is that a lot of Christians are binded by formality and all of those stuff or stiff practice. Like they need to perform a tons of religious ritual because you're talking to Zeus, you're talking to the God of God, not to a fellow human. So the image and the feel that Christianity has the status quo is that Christianity is less ritualistic and 
and God. So we change that in our side of the house, given all the picturization on why they will be the human on our side. But lastly, they're also constantly reminded that following Jesus is always struggling and always pain and constant suffering under all. Sometimes you just need an escape. This breaks opening that lock then of talking about, oh, people will opt, people will opt out, opt in or opt out. It doesn't matter if people opt in or opt out. Well, after is, you know, what how the existing followers perceive their belief to be. And we prove that at least in our side of the house, we give them motivation and that things are going to be better. They should cheer up. Know that none of these benefits contradicts my idea of where the image is what's important. None of these benefits can be achieved exclusively with image that cannot even exist with scripture. This, uh, you know, like this exclusive under CG. Why did the extension win that round? First, I don't think OG can win with the explanation of follower insofar as people who follow religion usually operate based on inertia and the religion they're born to anyway, so that's probably not comparative. But it also wins against all baskets of all three benches who focus on a specific section of followers, progressive for OG, minority for all bench of whoever that's very confusing. What you get from CG is not only related to a specific issue, but fundamentally related to Jesus as a human being for every single Christian, the vulnerable actor in today. Um, okay. Okay, thank you, member of Fluff. Uh, to open CO's case, I call upon member of Fluff. Member of Fluff. Okay, yeah. Okay. Uh, so go by he, him pronouns and for POIs, please just unmute yourself. And disclaimer before I start my speech, like, like, yeah, before I start, I know it's a very sensitive issue. And if there's any adults, like, especially my parents and teachers who might be watching this, like, uh, please don't get mad at me because it's competitive debating and it doesn't represent my values. Okay, starting my speech in three, two, one. Panels, this debate does not happen in a vacuum. This is important to note because this debate happens in a context where Jesus's portrayal is crucial to the, the development of religious values and strength of believers. This means that yes, the crucifixion exists on either side and the stories of Jesus won't be changed irrespective of the arts that represent him. The question of this debate is what do we focus more on? The hardships and crucifixion that Jesus faced to teach people how to deal with problems or the many miracles that Jesus did while he was out and about because he was the son of God, which requires him to be portrayed in a serious manner. The reason why in modern media, like the passion of the Christ and the son of God, they portray Jesus as this charismatic, wise, not cheerful, and a serious, serious being shows that this is a more sustainable uh, depiction for followers, which I'm going to talk about more. OO did a good job telling stories about Jesus and his miracles. However, they never told you a more crucial point in this debate, which is about why Jesus' portrayal truly changes the whole visual visualization that believers have about Jesus, which impacts their faith. The big case coming from OO is only about how art inherently tied to how believers see Jesus and how they're able to relate to him. But OO did not explain thoroughly why the portrayal of Jesus is distinctive, which will put us ahead in this debate. So let's talk about it. The distinctive portrayal of Jesus in the medieval era is twofold. One, Jesus is portrayed as suffering being on the cross, showing his sacrifice. And second, Jesus in his judgment seat, because he was judged greatly, which is a great representation on how being a religious person and being loyal and committed to your God is something that you will actually be judged for, that you will experience hardship for. But second, CO believes that this is a more accurate representation to the story and values of Christianity a religion that is established under the basis of Jesus's sacrifice and existence and other religions that acknowledge Jesus as a prophet, like Islam, for example. This is very important for panels and no other team than other than opposing opposition actually told you this extensively. Look, Jesus's portrayal needs to be accurate, not only to how he looks, because Justin is right when he says that no one actually knows, but closing opposition argues boldly that Jesus's portrayal needs to be accurate to the stories and true values of Christianity. I want to be clear, uh, yeah. So this is not enough to give the debate to opening opposition. But uh, three substantive contributions in my speech. First issue on the urgency and whether we need to prioritize progressive values over the accuracy of Jesus' portrayal to the main for articulator purpose of and values of Christianity. Secondly, my substantive contribution that is not derivative from zero about sustainability. And thirdly and finally, why, why the medieval portrayal is comparatively comparatively more beneficial for the people of faith and the most important actors that we need to prioritize. 
So moving on to my rebuttals, they try to claim that you're going to be more accepting of progressive gender roles on their side, right? Two responses here. One, panels, note that this is not a debate about social justice movements. We're not saying that believers are not supposed to be accepting towards queer, queer and gender fluid portrayals, right? But OG is out because this debate is just, because this debate, they never told you why suddenly with Jesus's dark age portrayal, you'll get total acceptance when there's actual text in the Bible that like completely goes against this like view, right? But secondly, let's take out their claim of that the, more, the medieval portrayal guilt trips followers. Two things to note here that truly show that OG has literally no case. One, on both sides, we won't be able to change the stories in the Bible. You don't change the fact that Jesus did die and suffer for your sins. You don't change the fact that being a Christian means you need to sacrifice your worldly values in order to be closer to God, right? And that's the whole point of Christianity. You should critic this more. But second, the lack of acceptance for LGBTQ individuals, as they try to put it, comes not from vague depictions of Jesus, but actually actual text that comes from the Bible. You don't guarantee acceptance of LGBTQ individuals on their side either. In CO, we tell you that Jesus is a unique and crucial actor in Christianity. Yeah. Uh, but before moving on to my substantive arguments, I'll, I'll take a few off. Yeah, I don't get why Jesus being shown as a grown man with beard in a cross is accurate or exclusively suitable to all of his life journey. That makes two opt-ins unable to answer my question. Even if the trade-off had to be made, we prove that it's better to picture Jesus as a human instead of a judge sitting in the judge seat. That's what you prove in your side. All right. Uh, okay. Here's the thing. We do depict Jesus as human because humans do experience suffering, right? Rather on your side where he, Jesus is just like an ideal person, just just going around being all happy and like committing miracles, right? That's not all that Christianity is about. Now, onto my first substantive, why the med my medieval portrayal is comparatively more beneficial for the people of faith. I want to characterize why is the portrayal of saints of God really important? This looks like in the case of Islam, how you're not supposed to paint Muhammad's picture because it's considered disrespectful or the portrayal of lots of Hindu gods and their specific attributes as being a central part of the religion. Jesus is the bridge between uh, Jesus is the bridge between an unknown figure that is God of Abraham and Israel and in the Bible and there the, and he's actually one who can truly show two sides the human side and also the godly side. That means that Jesus has to be portrayed in a portrayal that is serious and wise because it affects the whole story and value of how people view Jesus as the bridge between worlds. That means that as a burden that Closing opposition and proof why the medieval portrayal of Jesus is more mature and filled with wisdom. It is more helpful for the development of religious organizations. What does that mean? It means that the portrayal of Jesus is extremely significant and leads to incredibly powerful narratives on our side. Closing opposition gives you the context as to why this is crucial to society at large. First layer of analysis, why do people subscribe to religion to begin with? Note that when people join religion, they want to get guidance. That means that people like Muhammad, Buddha, and Jesus, the most important figures of the religion, are crucial to these people and the way that they say their religion. We tell you that seeing Jesus with a dark age portrayal is not as helpful as portraying him as mature and with a serious expression because Jesus is supposed to be an example and a role model to struggling Christians. But second argument, what... Uh, the, the medieval portrayal of Jesus portrays more accurate representation of the current believers' challenges, right? Because believers actually want to idealize Jesus. He's a role model for them, for that, them, right? What does this mean on their side? It means that these people won't be able to relate to Jesus as much because when you only portray Jesus as constantly happy and beautiful and gender fluid, then that's not a circumstance that most Christians or even most individuals face. We say that their world is one where people don't look at Jesus for guidance exactly because he's never portrayed facing any hardship. It's a world where the image and ideals of Jesus are far more difficult and unrealistic for believers to achieve, and it's something that only alienates the majority of believers who do face suffering. Let's compare that with our side, where we actually show Jesus in a realistic manner and acknowledge all his hardships. He's not happy all the time. He has the capacity for suffering. In fact, he's probably suffered more than you, and even though, like, all, even after all that, it means that Jesus is a far more realistic person, and despite his bad circumstances, he was still able to be a good person. We pick more important on stories where Jesus actually faces hardships against like the Pharisees who used that to test him. We prefer a world where believers relate better to Jesus and learn from him how to deal with hardship. Uh, yeah, because we actually show Jesus in a realistic manner that is helpful towards believers. See, uh, closing opposition takes this debate. Thank you, a member of opposition. To close the government bench case, I call upon the Gulf Whip. Uh, am I rebuttal? Yep, you're audible. Okay, so 
setting up ya timer Oke, okay, uh, check one again, uh, once again. I'm audible. Yep, you're still audible. Oke, okay, cool. If you have to just type in the chat box. Prioritize opening. Probably will accept one. I will start my speech in three, two, one. I will do two things in my speech. Number one, I will quickly seal the bill discussion about minority and acceptance of religion towards them. But two, I will review the biggest extension, which is talking about relatability, the most certain and inclusive benefit to religious followers. Before that, quick clarification to kick out opening debate. One, I don't get the opening debate that mainly talking about how it will affect the religion institution. The fact that they say this portrayal most likely exists in art and pop culture, I don't get structural analysis at all why this will influence the dynamic of decision making internally of the church. Because when you're talking about decision making of church, I think in most cases, depends on the actor that have their own authority, regardless of the art and modern portrayal of Jesus, for example, Pope or Cardinal in Catholic Church, because they also detach from pop, pop culture anyway, and the decision of art anyway. So I think the debate about how it affects church is too big burden to be taken by opening, especially when talking about how medieval portrayal can be utilized by church to build their followers in opening government. Because if this is the case, the, the, if the church is that evil, for example, it will be worse and symmetrical in both sides anyway, because church will use direct portrayal to say that Jesus is happy regardless of their condition. So you need to pay to be passionate no matter how hard your life, for example, become the justification for church to abuse their power, such as do prosperity gospel and prevent check and balance among their followers. That's why OG lose. But two, the benefit of motivation from struggle in OO and high school extension from CO, this is not equality. If I equity violation because they're literally high school, it's hella questionable. Because the case line of the analysis on, oh, Jesus is paying my sins, so I need to be taught. This is problematic because of three things. One, this portrayal doesn't happen in a vacuum. It means there is also another verses that exists to show the characteristic of the Jesus regardless of the portrayal in your set of For example, verses that show Jesus is omnipotent, it means he will help you regardless of your condition. It means the feeling of guidance still exists anyway. I don't get the significance of a portion side. But two, the benefit of all is super, super over Generalizing, uh, over generalizing. That's why you need to go to church more often, Sekar. Because we say in CG, the reason why people want to up into religion is different for each people. Sure, some people want to get the illusion that there is entity that powerful, but in other hand, there is also people that want to up into religion because they want spiritual journey, exploration. That's why portrayal as teenager and children is more suitable with them only as an inclusive government. But lastly, the portrayal of Jesus always being taught and struggling because in the end, they will gain wisdom in the end in the opposition is really problematic because this is the one that the narrative instead of religion institution becomes so toxic because you normalize weakness towards your followers, for example. There is okay for you to remain silent during oppression or it's okay to live in the suffering life because Jesus also faced the same thing, for example. So I don't think, I don't think opening opposition can win this debate unless they prove the comparative why the heart in your side is also mitigatable because both portrayal is not inherent virtue in and of itself. Don't believe in opening debate just because they're all debater put aside your bias in this round. Two clashes in my speech. First, into the first clash about self-fulfillment and minority. Three reasons why this is not the most relevant discussion in this debate. One, regardless of the portrayal, religion inherently multi-interpretative. What does it look like and what is the consequence of this. The fact that there is existence of charismatic Christians in the for example, because they use fetish of doubt dancing like GBE. Or in other hand, Pentecostal use more calm ritual, even if they believe with the same portrayal of Jesus, it indicates that religious institutions always have power to construct new dogma that switch with their followers' need 
get us to portrayal of Jesus. So interpretation has nothing to do with the portrayal of Jesus. This is the missing uh, logic that exists in opening debate. This analysis is really important because it means all oh, harm is not significant because the story of Jesus in Bible also can be interpreted differently. Therefore, we can justify the differences portrayal in art and Bible. This is also not going to harm the consistency of religion because in CG, even if you need to change the portrayal in art between the Bible, we can say that this is because the misinterpretation of religion leader in the past because as normal human being, they have a lot of limitation of knowledge. This has already happened in status quo when Protestant church justified new dogma and new branches using this narrative. Stop bringing consistency argument in every single argument debate and in every single religion debate because Justin eliminated with this kind of argument. But second, I say protection of identity is even worse in opposition side using medieval portrayal because factually speaking, this portrayal exists because of external force that heavily influenced by patriarchy value. This is why Jesus get portrayed as man because just think that this is more appealing to gray area and rightly because men see as more nature and wisdom. This is why it's even worse in opposition because they can be utilized by evil followers to say that it might be true that even our model, which is role model, which is Jesus, to look at is, is also wisdom man and not woman, for example, there is still the condition of minority or even going to be worse in your sort of house. But lastly, even if you want to talk talking about minority. This is better in CG. Example, because you portray Jesus as innocent children that still have a lot of journey, it means you can right now send narrative that exploration of sexuality is okay, for example, because Jesus in the past is also innocent children that explore a lot of things in the past. But this is not a taboo thing, for example, that questioning your life journey is okay to feel that sometimes okay to feel lost because Jesus did not accept you as a grown human in the end because Jesus also have the same relatability as you because in the past they also feel lost, for example, that they, he do some blunder action, like for example, cleansing of temple in the past because they feel lost by seeing a lot of people sell goods in front of uh, Europe. Church, for example, this only exists when you portray Jesus as more explorative individual and have a lot of journey to be explored before the opening of opposition. Well, your, most of your rebuttals is dismissive and says that, oh, it's not comparative because art doesn't have any impact and we can just do it through sermon. But is that applicable to all of the depiction that you also just claim regarding children having the benefits of minority? Oh, good, because this is my second class, Rebuild JGS Extension. What CG provide to you in debate this is also answer the comparative that opening opposition really want us to answer. We are the only one that characterize what is the significant, significant differences between these two portrayals. What happened in medieval opposition? You portray Jesus as the perfect individual, as the one that always absolute in all of their action because they are the most wisdom individual. I think this is because we need to realize what is the impact of portrayal of Jesus. Portrayal used as a part to looking up as a followers. That Jesus is someone that you need to follow and have the same behavior, for example. What is the consequences of two perfect portrayal in opposition? The absence of relatability. All can say that, oh, under our side, portrayal is more like human. Because literally, just in your side, there is his branding with Zeus that being perfect entity. It means less likely for relatability to access that we, you will, you know, like you will try to justify Jesus that he loved the doing the cleansing of temple and being angry in front of their followers without and feeling regret after that because they might think that this is war, that this is because of Buddha and Satan, for example. This kind of narrative is missing in your third house, except because you will portray Jesus as someone that never do a mistake, for example. This way, the parallel example is in Islam. In Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give more highlight towards prophet instead of angel and angels such as Yusuf that he loves his beautiful stepmother or Yunus that's so pessimistic because this is show that the chosen one even can make a mistake, for example. That me as a followers also can get acceptance again as, a, uh, as uh, by Jesus, for example, even if in the past I do mistake, for example. It means the bunch back, the motivation, the attachment towards religion is exactly better under our service because right now we can be open more discussion, for example. We can say that exploration is not wrong. We can say that do some mistake in the past is not wrong because Jesus also do you know, like some blunder action in his life, for example. That this is also a parallel example with Nabi Muhammad that probably being angry with their followers and don't want to accept second balance, for example. That it means under our set of dollars, we give more ability and open discussion to the minority, even the most, most vulnerable actor as a whole, proud to close the case of government. Okay, thank you, Government Whip. Lastly, to close this entire debate, I call upon Opposition Whip. Hi, um, can you hear me? It's the same off the way for now. You're in fit, uh, you're visible and audible. Oh. Okay. Um, starting my speech and okay. three, two, one. 
portrayal of Jesus is highly crucial because Jesus is not just like any other prophet, which is fully human. Jesus is the literal bridge within an unknown figure that is the God of Abraham and Israel in the Bible, and one that can truly show two sides, the human side and also the godly side. This has shown how Jesus can die, but can rise from death at the same time, right? This is why prayers, you can actually portray to him and you can actually pray to Jesus because he is God. CEO is the only team that characterizes this to you. Know that CG misrepresents our case. We never said that the medieval portrayal is perfect portrayal or how Jesus is a perfect individual, right? On our side, we told you clearly that Jesus still has a human side. We are still okay with portraying Jesus as having doubts, like, for, like before his crucifixion, for example, or when Jesus got mad at the temple, showing that he doesn't have full control over his emotions, or showing how Jesus has to literally try not to eat when the devil told him that he should eat after like 40 days of fasting. So yes, people can still relate to Jesus on our side, right? So CG's case about relatability is worse than our accurate high school case. We might be the only high school team here, but it's not impossible that a high school extension is better than me. But it's, and a high school case, it's not something to do the proper rebuttals. CEO has the upper hand in this debate because we told you clearly how in the question of which portrayal is better for religious people, which is the most important actor and the most impacted actor within this debate. CEO is the only team that tells you that that means that Jesus has to be portrayed in a portrayal that is serious and wise because it affects the whole story and value of how people view Jesus as a bridge between God and humans. Two things that also are from my speech round. Firstly, I'll draw the line with the government bench and why they cannot win this debate. Secondly, I'll show to you why we provide you a more in-depth and crucial analysis within this debate and weigh it up against what OO told you. First thing then, let's engage what o with OG and what CG told you, right? CG told you about how innocence will bring better acceptance to sexuality. Two responses. Firstly, panels, know that this is not a debate about the social justice movement. We are not saying that believers are not supposed to be accepting towards queer or gender fluid portrayal. But CG is out of this debate because I never told you why suddenly, with Jesus' dark age portrayal, you would get total acceptance. But secondly, let's take out their actual case, right? Two things to note here. Firstly, on both sides, you won't change the stories in the Bible. So you don't change the fact that Jesus did die for your sins, and you don't change the fact that being a Christian means that you need to sacrifice your worldly values in order to be closer to God. And that's the whole point of Christianity, right? So you should credit this more. But secondly, the lack of acceptance in the LGBTQ individuals comes not from vague decisions, but from actual texts that are the Bible. So you don't guarantee the acceptance in the LGBTQ like individuals on your side either, exactly because you don't change the content of the Bible that is still interpreted in a like a, like in a homophobic way. So how do you weigh this judge? Oh, I already told you that this benefit is marginal and this is not important. They're right. But moreover, ever since Josh's speech, we gave you a clear parameter of sustainability, that there will be insane backlash from the existing religious community when you have the image of gender exactly because of people in the Bible in the first place, right? Or how people interpret the Bible are inherently homophobic, right? That means that it's important because it's a but our religious community and the religious debate before we should prioritize them in the first place, right? But second thing that CG told you, acceptance will be better because it, it being accurate won't matter and the most important thing is how people perceive this. Look, let's think about their best here. CO is the only team that tells you that Jesus' traits are so clearly portrayed in the Bible, therefore they need to be consistent with how he looks like within art. So this looks like Jesus being someone who is wise and someone who depicts his disciples can rely on or someone who's good in Suffering because he's oppressed for his ideals. So consistency is crucial within this debate, and only side opposition provides that, right? So why is your case more crucial in this debate? Because this is where we set up the second parameter in my member's speech of accuracy of consistency within the Christian religion, and this is crucial towards religious debate as a whole. Before I move on to my second clash, is there any of you wants? Oh, thanks, CG. Our benefit about relatability is also impacted right-wing followers exactly because they also do some mistakes. Take cool, amazing. My whole second class is about relatability. So let's talk about this and we just stop against OO and uh, like talk about relatability, right? So OO told you here that human attribute of Jesus gives you a better depiction and therefore better relatability of the actions that he did. On CO, we want to take that a step further by giving you tangible impacts on how this affects the faith of the followers' religion. It gives hope towards Christian religious minorities in Indonesia, for example, exactly because they relate to the oppressed. This is important because we actually mechanize OO's point and prove to you why, what, like, what they say is important in tangible benefits. But secondly then, OO gave you the harm of toxic positivity and how the opposition bench means they can't trust God because he is wise. Here's where I'll engage to your point about relatability, right? We said it on our side, humans, like Christians see this 
Jesus as a person who is fully God and fully man. This is a complicated theological concept that exists within Christianity, right? So yes, CG, relatability still exists on our side because Christians believe that Jesus is fully God and fully man. Therefore, fully man is still an attribute that we get and relatability still exists on our side. So the implications of this then are two things. That firstly, it just deeply infects the ability for salvation. Because if you only portray Jesus as someone who is an innocent person, you undermine the severity of the mission that he came to earth to complete that is innocent, you make him seem like he doesn't actually have a proper mission and a new message because you portray someone who's innocent and who's there to have fun in the first place. But secondly, believers would relate to Jesus more on our side because the thing is we place importance on dealing with hardship rather than just being happy and doing miracles. And that is why we don't just completely live them in the dark when Christians encounter suffering. CEO is the only team that explains to you the importance side. I want to know why this is so crucial and why this literally like takes us to clash on this debate because of tangible benefits, right? We told you on CO that you can get both benefits of Jesus being fully human and being fully God that you can relate to, right? So that means two things, right? One, on the aspect that Jesus is actually human, you can relate to him and the struggles that he goes through. But two, on the aspect that Jesus is fully God, that also means that the salvation he delivers is actually a good one because it's salvation that is coming directly from God and a manifestation of how God loves his people, right? That means that we get both things on our side the ability of like a comfort space where you can actually talk to jesus and we can actually pass your burdens on jesus because he understands what you're going through because he has gone through the same time of suffering this is backed up by verses in the bible by the way but also really the ability in this We think that this is important because we mechanize all this benefit better. Why didn't the CEO win? Because this concept is so central to Christianity because it means that, for one, Jesus is someone who sympathizes to your struggles and is a crucial actor to replace you for your sins. The implication of this, then, is that believers are going to be better coping with their problems because the story that we place importance on can relate and take like can actually relate to in the first place the team that should take this debate is the one that understands the uniqueness of Jesus and the context and how that affects the religious community right so for the sake of religion we are so proud to start closing off okay thank you so much um opposition whip for that speech and thank you all of the teams for that performance in this grand final uh, I think the committee can stop recording now. Um, for all teams, please stay uh, please stay here in the hall when the judges is going to move to the breakout room and make our calls. Uh, I give the floor back to the CAP and for judges, let's wait for us to be 